So today we'll be reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, Chapter 13. Rahuga converses with Jag Bharat. Text number 10. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sometimes, sometimes, 
Shudra. Shudra. Very insignificant. Very insignificant. The sound. The sound. Sexual enjoyment. Sexual enjoyment. Vichimvani. Vichimvani. Searching for. Searching for. Tut. Tut. Of those women. Of those women. Amakshikabi. Amakshikabi. By honeybees. By honeybees. Or the husbands. Or the husbands. Or family members. Or family members. Yatita. Yatita. Very much aggrieved. Very much aggrieved. Vimana. Insulted. Insulted. Tatra. Tatra. In that. In that. Ati. Ati. Very much. Very much. Krishna. Krishna. With difficulty. Because of spending money. Because of spending money. Prapti labdamana. Prapti labdamana. Obtaining sexual enjoyment. Obtaining sexual enjoyment. Balad. Balad. By force. By force. Vilum panti. Kidnapped. Kidnapped. Thereafter. The object of sense enjoyment. The object of sense enjoyment. The woman. The woman. Tata. Tata. From him. From him. Anye. Another debauchee. Another debauchee. Translation in purport. Sometimes. In order to have a little insignificant sex enjoyment, one searches after a debauched woman. In this attempt, one is insulted and is chastised by the woman's kinsman. This is like going to take honey from a beehive and being attacked by the bees. Sometimes, after spending lots of money, one may acquire another woman for some extra sense enjoyment. Unfortunately, the, scent, the objects of sense enjoyment, the woman, is taken away or kidnapped by another Dvachi. Report. In a great forest, honeycombs are very important. People often go there to collect honey from combs and sometimes the bees attack and punish them. In human society, those who are not Krishna conscious, remain in the forest of material life simply for the honey of sex life. <coughs> Such debauchees are not at all satisfied with one life. They want many women. Day after day in great difficulty. They try to secure such women and sometimes while trying to taste this kind of honey, one is attacked by a woman's kinsman and chastised very heavily. By bribing others when they secure another woman for enjoyment, yet another debauchee may kidnap her or offer her something better. This woman hunting is going on, this woman hunting is going on in the forest of the material world, sometimes legally and sometimes illegally. Consequently, in this Krishna consciousness movement, the devotees are forbidden to have illicit sex, thus they avoid so many difficulties. One should remain satisfied with one woman being duly married. <coughs> one can satisfy one's lusty desires with his wife without creating disturbance in society and being punished for doing so. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani 
Pracharine, Nirvishe Shunyavadi, Pashtapyadeshatarine. So, it is stated very nicely in the Shiva Bhagavatam. Yan Maitanadi, the ladies who come, the two chum. That happiness which is considered Adi. Maitun is Adi. Sexual intercourse is number one pleasure in this material world. For who? Grihamedi. The envious materialistic people. But for the transcendentalist, he took Chum, it is insignificant. So how can one possibly Coming out of a society in which everyone is addicted by sex play, how is it possible to come to a platform where you can feel that it's insignificant? I mean, how can you possibly make that transition? We live in a completely sexually surcharged society as confirmed by Sigmund Freud. The Papa said he was right regarding the material world. It does involve completely around the sex, that's a thing. So how does one, in a, you're living in a sexually discharged atmosphere, which is, I mean, as soon as you walk out on the street, I mean, everywhere you go, the place, this place is sexually surcharged. This is the way they, everybody's dressing, the way they talk, the posters, the billboards, the toothpaste advertisements, I mean, everything is sex. What was that ad? Let's see. New, oh yeah, I remember that ad when I was a kid. New ultraviolet toothpaste gives your mouth sex appeal. <laughs> <laughs> and then in my generation, you grew up with the Beatles, you know. I want to hold your hand. Since I saw her standing there, my heart went boom. And I was standing in the room, you know, all this garbage. <laughs> We're completely programmed. And if you aren't inclined, I mean, and I remember in high school, I wasn't inclined to date girls, I, but I was, there's all this pressure, you know. It's all this pressure. I remember we, we had, in the U.S., you have six, in high school and junior high, you have six classes a day. And you have what's called homeroom, where you meet every day, they take the attendance, we can say the Lord's Prayer, we take attendance, and we go to our six classes after that. It's called homeroom, it lasted about 10 to 15 minutes every morning we start the day. So in home, all the way from the 6th grade to the 12th grade, it was all alphabetical order. So I was, I was Stephen Bridge, and I was sitting between two girls, Sherry Brakeiron and Patsy Brill. And they were girlfriends, they were always talking back and forth, and I was sitting in the middle, for six years I had to sit in the middle of their conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning. <laughs> By the time it reached the senior year, the big thing for the seniors was the senior prom. You know, you invite some girl you know, to come to the senior prom. You get your t you run your tuxedo. You know, she gets one of these fans, one of these fancy gowns. You know, and you buy her a corsage, a, fan a fancy flower thing. You put it Everybody gets their date to go to the senior prom. And every girl, you know, she has to have her date. Otherwise, she's just nothing. So I, I had no interest in such an affair, you know, senior prom, you know. <laughs> who cares what this is. But Patsy and Sherry had one girlfriend who didn't have a date yet. I was bombarded by these girls, you, know, you have to, you have to take her to the prom. You know. So this way we're pressured, you see, we're just pressured. And one of my, even, even one of my male friends, Bill Abbey, he used to, he used to call me, I wasn't dating girls, he, called, he made it, he used to call me Chicken Finsterwald, it was a nickname, you know, for being a coward, because I wasn't dating girls, you know. So, <laughs> it was all this pressure, you know. The girls were pressuring me, the boys were pressuring me, you've got to get into this male-female thing, you just got into it, otherwise you know it. You're not in a male-female thing, you're nowhere. Where is the training for Brahmacharya Ashram? Where is the training? There's no training for Brahmacharya Ashram in this kosha. You see, you see every woman is mother. Matishi. 
Prabhupada taught us, I don't know, sometimes some devotees now they want to change it in this kind. All the women should not be managing anymore. They're actually trying to change it in this kind. But what can I say? Prabhupada personally ordered me in a letter. I have the letter to prove it. He said, address every woman as mother. Prabhupada's personal order to me. So, I don't care what they say. <coughs> <laughs> Prabhupada ordered me. Every woman is my mother, except for my wife. You see. This is the problem. If I stop seeing woman as mother, what is the danger in this kind? We will start seeing them as such objects. You see. That's the danger. If we throw away seeing women as mother to modernize and you know pacify the feminists or whatever with rationale may be there, then we run the risk of going back to seeing women as sex objects in due course. You see, because mother means I wouldn't dream of having sex with you. You're my mother. You see, that's mother. I wouldn't dream of having sex with her. You're my mother. Of course, the, uh, you know, Hajar Muhammad, he had, his father was so low class, he had to say, don't have sex with your mother. That's how they rated the, the, the persons who became the first Muslims were. Don't have sex with your mother. You won't find the injunction in the Bhagavad Gita, don't have sex with your mother. You see. But even in the Bible, you won't. So the, the woman, she is seen as my mother. And that is respect. Just like my father is my Prabhu, my master, my mother is also my Prabhu, she is my master. You see. And Prabhu said the women, they should see the men as sons. Treat them as sons. In this way, mother and son. It's a very nice relationship. Formal, but pure. Mother and son. Uh, so instead of being carried away by all of this, you know, this lusty propaganda, um, we should just develop a cool brain, you know, by following the wonderful pathway, the bhakti mar, going cool brain. Bhakti mar means cool brain, not agitated brain. So if your mind is your mind is agitated, but he did cool off. He's got to go in the cooler. <laughs> if you're all hot, you just got to go in the cooler and you cool off. You see, and then that cooler is Because Krishna is the source of all pleasure, you see. All pleasure actually coming from Krishna. This sexual pleasure is simply perversion of real pleasure, perverted reflection of actual pleasure. You see. Why would you take the perverted reflection of the thing when you can get the real thing? You see. This is intelligence. Why take, if I hold a, you know, cashier's check for a billion dollars up in the air and say, here, this is for you. And you see the reflection in the water. You dive into the water to take the reflection of the cashier's check. What kind of idiot are we, you see? We want to take the reflection of the thing. The reflection is backwards. It's not even, you know, it inverts it, it perverts it. I mean, it's reflected. It's not the original form, it's now a perverted or inverted form of the original object. So why take a perverted or inverted form of, you know, of rasa, of pleasure, when you get the real original form? This is intelligent. You see. Take that, take the original billion dollar cash in your chest. Why die back to the reflection of it in the water? <clears throat> this is called Krishna consciousness, to go for the original billion dollar cash. It's all there. Everything is there in that Maha Mantra. The whole spiritual world is there. 
All the pastimes of Krishna, all the forms, all the qualities, the entourage, the paraphernalia, the dham, everything about Krishna that you could ever experience or ever relish or, and have in all of eternity is already right there at your tongue tip. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.